Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we will talk about airbrushing and I will airbrush a model that I'm going to do a series on. This model is a model dear to me because it is something I wanted to paint since a long time and I follow the development of it. It's carted by Joaquin Palacios and is after the concept art of Lucio Barrillo and they are both amazing artists. And if you like this model and you catch this video in May 2023, we are running a Kickstarter and you can find the link down below so you can follow the campaign and find this model and a lot of amazing things actually in the campaign. For example, we have a super cool Chimera color set by Mark Masklanz on Skin Tones. So do not miss it because it's special. And uh, this video we will talk about how to airbrush and to mood paint a model to make easier your life in later stage of paint and also, if you understand how this works, it will make the painting of armies much easier. So, bear with me and enjoy the video! Okay, as you can see I start from a black base. You can spray it or airbrush it. I used a Molotov black airbrushed. And uh, my airbrush is set at 30 psi 2 bars, roughly. Um, the more power you put to the airbrush, the more it will shoot stronger jets, let's say. And it will clog less, um, but the um, spray will be more, um, more powerful and it can create some spider webs. On the, on the model. So this is usually what I go through. Now I'm using the Chimera Black with the Molotov Thinner that is matte together with white, a little bit of white I will add to the, to the pot to make a grey. And these are matte paints. This is super useful when you airbrush because the matte paints will uh, create a surface that is more easily controllable for when you paint on top. I explained this in the video about frosting. It's super useful to have a matte base to paint over instead of a glossy base. So this is why I'm doing it. And I'm doing a zenithal priming right now, as you can see, to pick out the various detail on the model and making it stand out and create a lighter base to apply colors later. So I'm going now with this dark grey and later I will increase the amount of white to, to make it more uh, light, of course. I'm spraying at a roughly 45 degrees angle. I'm not too far away from the model, as you can see. The farther away you are, the more you will uh, paint on top of everything, of course. And the more near you are, the more controlled you will be, but you will have a less of a general light effect. Right now I increase the white so I can make the light area more, uh, more light to contrast more with the shadow area. Airbrushing Chimera Colors is not too difficult as long as you dilute them a lot. This is what I did. And there is a lot of dilution. You can do several passes to cover at that point. But it's, um, it's useful to, to dilute quite a bit. As you can see, I put a, a, lot, of, a lot of solvent in it. Now I'm going very white. Remember that even if I am doing full white right now, the airbrush is, uh, is very transparent in the, in the application. It's always very transparent. So this means that to achieve real coverage with an airbrush, you need to do many, many passages. This is super important to remember because it is a sort of glazing, the airbrush. It always is a, um, 
a transparent paint on top of transparent paints. So the color below they will always stand out in a in a little in a little way. This means that in this case I'm using pure white, very diluted, but still the black is shining through, making it appear grey, as you can see. This is super important to remember with the airbrush because losing saturation with the airbrush is really common, super common. You don't have a um, you don't have super saturated part with the airbrush unless you do a lot of passages or coverage if you need coverage this is another another thing to to remember I try to put the most amount of white in the lightest areas that I want in the model. I'm trying to do a dark model on the lower part and a brighter on the upper part to make it like looking like it's getting out of shadows in a way. So this is why I'm insisting a lot in the upper torso of the rider and in the head of the horse. I'm also creating lighter parts where I see that there is the, mm, the flesh standing out because I want to make it like luminous, that part of the flesh with a fire effect or similar this is why I'm, I'm doing it also on the legs, these whitish areas I'm creating some reflection points with the white and creating also a map for my mind to remember where to put lighter paint or darker paint in the future for when I use the, the brushes. This is a useful exercise to try and remember where you want the light to stand out. Placing it with the airbrush, having a mental note and then working on it later. Now with violet from the base set I will create colored shadows. So I'm putting violet very diluted. Shadows are better when they are very diluted. And since violet is a super dark color anyway, I'm using it in the shadow part. So I'm spraying from below to tint with violet the lower parts and in general in my piece I will try to keep the violet as a shadow color and if you do this in, uh, in the beginning stage with the airbrush it will be helpful later because you don't have to do much brushwork in the shadow area anymore if it is already tinted in the color that you need so what I'm doing with the with this is creating a mood okay now that the mood with the violet is established with the magenta I'm creating a a lighter, lighter tone, more warm, of course, mixing it with the with the violet that I had before in the in the cup. As you can see, the, the color is changing, and I'm adding a touch of white for coverage. White will increase the coverage of the of the colors that you mix it in. And since in the Chimera colors there is no white included, it's very important that sometimes you add a touch of white for this reason. So now I am picking up mid-tones with this color. And since I'm going on to the mid-tones that previously were sprayed white, 
this color will, um, will be more visible than the previous violet that was over black for the transparency reasons that we talked before. And you can see that this is taking hold already and the model is starting to, to become violet. Now I'm using the Marmas Clan's shiny skin tone, that is a wonderful color by the way, to, to add to the mix, to not lose too much saturation, but going up in light anyway. I put a lot, so I need a little bit of extra magenta. As you can see, I have a bad habit of mixing directly in the airbrush. Um, if you want a suggestion at the beginning, you can use a, a little cup to do it and then put it inside the airbrush in a, in a second moment. <laughs> in any case, I am creating this lighter pinkish tone and then going on the, on the light parts. Now, as you may understand what I'm doing is that I am creating a mood for the, for the piece to work on top. It's not an airbrush painting, it's a mood painting that will be later changed with the brush. But I'm doing it to, to guide my future choices and to create also a little of transparency for later because those colors will, will show up anyway a little. For example, right now I'm drying up the paint with the airbrush itself by spraying only the air. This is very useful to do. It's, a, it's a quite a good technique. And yeah, I'm increasing the light, keeping this cold pinkish tone in the light areas. If you want to create a mood like this on a model, it's super easy with the airbrush. It will give you ideas and will be super useful for later. You don't have to learn too much about airbrushing to do this. So right now I'm increasing some, some lights with the, a, similar, a similar mix as before, but adding the orange to make it way more orangey and covering because of the shiny skin tone to create light spots in the flesh areas of the of the horse you will see in a moment yeah, I have this salmon tone I'm putting it on the face that I want to be very flamboyant and I'm tinting all the flesh areas to create a strong contrast between the orange and the purple to later improve with my brushes. I'm doing this to also create some interest point in the, in the model because in the end, if you create a, a painting that is almost of one color, almost only of one color, like all purple, with variation on purple, but all purple, it can be very boring. So to remove this boredom from the viewer, I am creating some interesting spots with this OSL effect that I will do later by brush. But right now I'm marking it with the airbrush to remember where to put it and how it will uh, somewhat look later with all the contrast and the saturation that is needed, of course, because the airbrush, as I said, is not too saturated as a, as a medium unless you insist a lot. But I prefer to usually paint with a lot of brush, so this is just a guide for me and must be taken as such. creating um, an orange that is stronger with magenta in it. It's 
so it's more violent, more saturated than before. And I'm making it darker and stronger at the same time. is basically finished to start painting with the brush. There is a lot of contrast going on. Okay, that's all for the airbrushing phase. Remember that I will brush on top of this model in the next videos so you can know how to move forward from this and finish a model after mood painting with the airbrush. So stay tuned, I will publish more videos on this topic. And if you want to support us and make this video keep going, there is a Kickstarter campaign in May 2023 where you can find this model, paints and other things like tutorials and a palette that you may like and it's running on the Kickstarter right now. So link in the description, support us. Thank you for watching the video and see you next time.